This is the Halftime Show with Omar al on Pulse95. Yes, salam, welcome to the Halftime Show with Omar al I am your host, coming everything sport, international and local. Hope you're having a blessed day wherever you're tuned in around the world, whether it's 95FM, Pulse95Radio.com, our app, Sharjah Broadcasting Authority. We've been chilling at home, watching us live on YouTube, as you see me clear the desk. Um, okay, plenty of stuff to talk about today. I mean, the Premier League season 2021 finale happened yesterday. So we're talking about that with the curtain falling on another domestic season across Europe. We take a look at the at the team of the season in England and also how it went down on the last day. La Liga crowns its new champions. And yes, I said it right, new champions. But what, the, what makes it special that Atletico Madrid won the league? The halftime show hosted its own uh, fantasy Premier League this year for all the Pulse 95 listeners and I know people love their fantasy football so we were we were talking about that and I'm actually going to announce the winner today on the show and maybe even ask him how he's done it uh, on Wednesday now reinventing yourself is one of the terms we often hear a lot in health and fitness but my question to you is how do you continue to grow without facing discomfort Text us on 4215 the Salat and, and do. And I see all of you there on the Instagram live as well. Shout out to Megan, Louise, Zaruni, I'm Aya, Shakib, Terry, and Arpeth and Fatima. Thank you very much for, for tuning in. And I'm going to need your help for the show to let, get your feedback on how you reinvent yourself, including when you're sparring. All right, see you in, uh, in a few. Here's some uh, her, and I'll be right back. This is the halftime show with Omar Maduri on Pulse. It sure is that time. Man, I like this bed, man. This bed is on point. Uh, yeah, I picked it. Um, right, a couple of things we talk about. The question of the day, though, is when it comes to reinventing yourself in health and fitness, uh, what do you do to switch up your goals? And how hard is it to come to the realization that maybe you need more or maybe you need less and you're doing too much? And how do you use your energy expenditure? We're going to be talking about that later on the show. But I thought I'd drop that for you there. What's up? Um, I see you, Ray. Ray is here in the building. And uh, and Lil is asking me to kill him Arabic. I do. Yes, I do speak Arabic. But on the show, it's an English show. So therefore, that's what's happening. Almas, congratulations on your victory yesterday. Hard luck, Almas. And uh, sorry, hard luck, uh, Amelia and Tara. And we are talking all sorts of stuff today. So, okay, the question of the day before we go into the first segment is how hard is it to reinvent yourself, to switch up your goals, come to the realization that you need more or perhaps need less when it comes to health and fitness? And what is the key? And I'll give you a clue, energy expenditure. Okay, right, right. So, uh, plenty of stuff happening. The Premier League wrapped up yesterday. Man, how eventful was that? I mean, um... For some teams, like my team, there was nothing much to play for. But for other teams, such as Liverpool, Leicester and Chelsea, a lot of drama on the final day. Uh, plenty of things to talk about regarding that. They had to win to secure a third or fourth place in the Champions League. It's crazy how we're talking about this like a trophy. Well, 20 years ago when Wenger was doing it, he was being criticised. But it's interesting because of how much it means financially, economically and also what players can come in versus what players can come out. So plenty of things regarding that was on the line. And if you don't know and you've just woken up, Manchester City have won the league. Manchester United was second. Liverpool finish third and Chelsea finish fourth, meaning that... Leicester City and Brendan Rodgers miss out on the Champions League. How crazy is that? It's insane. I mean, they did say it was going to be a crazy year. It definitely was a crazy year because if you look at the people across Europe that have broken records in the domestic season, uh, plenty of that. Lille are the French champions, meaning PSG did not win the league. What? Cricket silence. Man. Sporting uh, are champions for the first time in 19 years. Lille are the uh, champions for the first time in 10 years. Rangers of Scotland 
are champions for the first time in 10 years. I'm so happy for Steven Gerrard for that. Atletico Madrid are champions for the first time in seven years. And Inter Milan are champions for the first time in 11 years. Wow, what a crazy season. Very happy for Klopp and Liverpool. As I said, farewell to uh, Gigi Wijnaldum on that. But there was a certain Sergio Aguero who, you know what? If you don't remember that moment, it was Aguero, you know, and and a crazy, like, ah, unbelievable, Jeff. unbelievable, Jeff. It was something else when you heard Aguero's voice, you know, um, shouted when they won the league for the first time. Man, that was cool. So um, that's regarding that. But there was a nice moment with that, just coming, having to see, um, you know, them saying farewell them respecting Guardiola in tears as well you know uh, Luis Suarez winning the league with Atletico but my question to you guys I'm not sure if you saw uh, you know Jamie Carragher and Gary Neville's team of the season when it came down to the Premier League uh, although it was done I think a couple of weeks back having looked at that did you agree with it or not? And, and if so, who would be in your team of the season? You know, um, Martinez. So Jamie Carragher picked Martinez in goal. Uh, Kufal, Stones, Diaz and Shaw at the back. De Bruyne, Kante, Fernandez across the three. And then Son, Kane and Foden. Don't know if I agree with half of that team. Uh, that was Jamie Carragher. Gary Neville picked Mendy, Walker, Diaz, Shaw and Maguire. United fans, you happy with Maguire being in team of the season? De Bruyne, Gundogan and Fernandes across the three and Foden, Kane and Rashford up top. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, that was Gary Neville's team. Um, and you had Jamie Redknapp had Martinez in goal, uh, Kufal Fofana. Thank you very much, Jamie. Yep, I agree with that. Diaz, probably uh, he's football writers player of the year so I can definitely see him and sure we had a good season then the three De Bruyne Gundogan and Mount and then up top Salah Kane and Foden I think out of those three um, pundits I think Jamie Redknapp's team is probably the most accurate you know um, you know I, I think I think it's hard not to not to have Foden in the team Kane top scorer Salah top scorer Gundogan was was outstanding when uh, De Bruyne was out Mason Mount has been a revelation. Diaz, obviously, you know, football writer, player of the year. Shaw's had his best season ever. Martinez, definitely agree with that. Although Edison, I believe, kept the most clean sheets. Fofana, for me, had to be in that team. And uh, and I was looking at those teams and players and I was wondering who else has, has been outstanding this year. But yeah, it's, it, it's good. I've got a question coming in here. Uh, would you rate Aguero as the best foreign player in the league history? That's a good question, Shakib. Uh, it's very hard to ignore Mr. Thierry Henry. I think Thierry Henry, even the players that played against him, uh, would say he was, you know, the best. And, and that's saying a lot because you've have you've got Cristiano Ronaldo in there, you've got Eric Cantona, Dennis Bergkamp, Zola. Um, Aguero was definitely, you know, one of the best players to play in the Premier League. Absolutely. Um, you know, but it, th- that's where I'm, I'm looking at and thinking, hmm, I don't know. I don't know how, how I'd feel about that. De Bruyne is someone, you know, that has to be mentioned in Team of the Season. But who, like I said, from those people that we mentioned on Team of the Season, how many of those would you agree with? Paul Merson, you know, he had uh, a couple of different things. He had Grealish in his team. He had Mares in his team. He had Rafinha in his team as well. Um, surely Stuart Dallas? No? Stuart Dallas maybe in the team? I don't know. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm saying. I'm looking at all these teams. I'm thinking... There's been some fantastic performances. If you look at the top five, you know, you look at City, um, United, Liverpool, Chelsea and Leicester. You've got to have like at least a player from each. Um, But the Manchester City team and Pep Guardiola were definitely, definitely fantastic. But anyway, don't worry what I think. What do you think? Who deserves to be in team of the season? We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about reinventing yourself. Um, and, and, And what do you do to do that? If is there discomfort in comfort? Think about that a second, and we'll be right back after the break. This is the Halftime Show with Omar al on Pulse95. Salam, welcome back to the Halftime Show with Omar al Thank you very much for tuning in. Listen, if you do miss the shows, don't worry, you can catch all the podcasts on Apple 
Apple, Spotify and SoundCloud. Just type in The Halftime Show. We got some fantastic guests talking about some very, very cool topics such as mental health, gut health and how important the brain is for recovery and performance. And um, we've had some really cool guests actually and uh, Raoba, who's actually on the Instagram Live at the moment is one of them who is the UAE National Team handball player. Very, very talented. And apparently now she is also playing football um, in... Uh, in the UAE tournament as well. So, hey, she's multi, multi-talented. Um, so the question I have for you guys today is how hard is it to reinvent yourself? And what do you do to switch it up? I mean, that's kind of like the main thing. Uh, the reason why I ask this is because there's a lot of the times like people reach out or send messages and say they're doing different things, um, but they're not quite sure if they're doing too much or maybe too little. Uh, but here's the thing. Here's, here's one, one for you to think about. How do you spend your energy? And normally... We look at the 24 hours a day and you, you you can be tired even if you're not physically doing stuff because mentally you're doing quite a bit. So um, how do you use your energy across the day and, and, and are you able to just kind of switch off, switch on and reset? Masoud is saying resetting your environment, that will help you to reset more better because sometimes external energies matter uh, the more you like, the more you're likely to be in a positive surroundings, you glow different. Absolutely, Masoud, very, very good. Uh, one of our regular listeners telling us how he resets. But that's the thing, you know, um, we, we, we're at a certain stage now. Obviously, your brain and your body mature and also are aware of how they work, both recovery-wise, strain-wise, uh, performance-wise, and also just in terms of being able to get that central balance that we normally normally struggle with uh, when we get too much on our plate mentally and physically so my question was how hard is it to reinvent yourself and have you come to that stage in health and fitness where you've thought no, I just need more you know I need to do more that, that's that's something that a lot of people you know stumble upon when they're when they're on their journey when they're on their goals they think you know I need I need more sometimes you know it's more like, no, I need to do less. I'm doing too much at the moment. I'm taking on too much. I'm probably saying yes to too many things and too many people. I need to just chill. And that's even hard as well because, you you know, sometimes when you're in it and the pace is so fast, you don't realize how much you're doing until you kind of slow down and, and look at your surroundings. So energy expenditure was one of the things that I thought, you know, how do you spend your energy? Let's say we gave you 24 hours to mark out on a piece of paper. You know what? Actually, do it with me. If you're on YouTube right now, pause this, go get a paper, come back. If you're not, hurry up, go <laughs> get a paper and come back. And on the paper, just mark 1 to 24. Now, let's look at that paper and see how many hours of that you're working. So if it's a 9 to 5 or if it's not, if it's longer, mark that out on the paper. And then also mark out your sleep. Now, once you've marked out your work and you've marked out your sleep, see how many hours are left. And are you using those hours energy-wise the way you should be? Are you being efficient? Maybe you might actually realize you've got more time on your hands. Maybe you realize, I actually don't need to be doing as much at that specific time. And that's kind of the first part of this energy expenditure part. Now, you put that out on a template and you mark that out every day. So you say, for example, today I'm going to spend one hour literally just reading or meditating or going for a walk or spending time with the kids or spending time with my mom or you know doing something where let's say for example decluttering i'm going to take one corner of the closet and i'm going to declutter it you know what you might think what's that got to do with fitness it's got everything to do with fitness and that's my point using your energy to clear out your surroundings can actually help you in feeling better and that's what people sometimes think well fitness is just physical no well it's not it's mental as well and so if you clear that space out let's say we use that last part if you spent that half an hour tomorrow on decluttering when you step into that area that energy is a different energy to when you started and that's what i'm saying because the next time you come in there there's a clarity there and sometimes we lack clarity because everything's just too claustrophobic or packed or busy and so here's, that's my point to you. How do you reinvent yourself? When you come to the realization of actually understanding how your day goes, put it out on, on a paper, 24 hours, mark out tomorrow's 24 hours on paper, see how many hours are you working, how many hours are you sleeping or planning to sleep, and then try and fill out 
at least half an hour to one hour of the remainder of time on something you really want to do and see how that feels. And let us know on Wednesday and we'll take it from there. Um, Masoud, mental and physical fitness equals a balanced fitness. Very, very good. And then um, who else? we've got Amelia who's come in in the room as well. Hey, Amelia, hard luck yesterday, but nice goal. I've got eyes everywhere. Adil, all the way from the US, is tuned in. So is Florin from the US. Mo Anazi, wow. And Lynn from Abu Dhabi as well. Everyone is um, definitely, definitely locking in on the Instagram live. Okay, so the question was for you, how do you reinvent yourself? Have you come to the realization that you need more? And also try and do that thing I actually set in this segment. 24 hours, the hours you work or, or study, the hours that you sleep, and the rest of the hour, see if you can do one thing tomorrow that you didn't do today and see if that makes you feel better. We'll be right back after the break. This is the Halftime Show with Omar al on Pulse95. Yes, we are back live on Pulse95 Radio, Instagram Live at Omar al as well. Hope you guys are having a blessed day wherever you are tuned in around the world, whether it's 95FM, Pulse95Radio.com, our app, Charger Broadcasting Authority, or even if you're watching us on YouTube. Okay, so a couple of things. The question of the day is how hard is it to reinvent yourself in fitness and health? That was the first question. And also when you break that down, and a lot of people normally say, I don't have time. I've got so much things I'm doing on. Do you ever come to the realization that maybe you're doing too much or maybe you're not doing enough? And we kind of suggested something for you guys to do to help you get through that 24 hours. So if you didn't catch the show, head over to the YouTube channel and watch um, the template that we put out for you guys to be able to put down your day for tomorrow and see if maybe those few pointers can actually help you get through tomorrow's day. Okay, right. So here at Pulse95 Radio, we obviously base our content on you guys, the listeners, the ones who are tuned in and uh, interacting with me all the time. You got Masoud in India, you got Florin in the US, you got Ala in Saudi, you've got, you know, Almas from, well, she's from Jordan, but she's here. You've got um, Dino from the UK. You got all these people, right, who are tuned in and they interact, they give it. You got Zara now in Brussels as well. She's international now when you got Zara in Brussels. You got all these people who are tuned in. And so we like to normally play a game of fantasy football. And so this year, we did a halftime show, Fantasy Football League. Now, this can get very competitive. And Maria will tell you this, you know, 100%. Because in the beginning, it starts off like, yeah, what are you doing? Uh, Who have you got in your team? Even Yassine, my cousin, right? He, he would be the first one to say, no, man, I'm not interested. And you will see him celebrate when the most random players get points for him so we did a little thing um on on uh, on the instagram and also on uh the premier league fantasy football and guess who was the winner right okay usual suspects tarik uh sorry tashrik muhammad yeah tashrik muhammad won the league this year the halftime show pulse 95 radio league he won it with 2453 points um in second place there was pranav prasana uh we had our very own zara shah in third place as well and ziad oaks in fourth place um so that was let's say the champions league of champions leagues for the halftime show um so what i'm gonna do actually is i'm gonna i'm gonna actually try and get tashrik muhammad uh on the show on wednesday just to let us know how he managed to win this league because the points that he was getting that was no fluke it was massive you know um i looked at his team yesterday he captain salah he had uh, bamford kane and antonio up front he had rafinha greenwood salah and lingard in the middle and he had arnold shaw and dallas and then he had martinez in goal um so well done to shrik muhammad congratulations on uh, on winning the pulse 95 radio halftime show what i'm going to do is i'm going to reach out to you and try and get you uh to tell us how you did it on wednesday's show i'm um, looking forward to that you know um it's been a crazy season you know uh it's been a, it's been a mad mad season when and fahad sent me uh some of these stats as well so the crazy season we've had is you've had new champions everywhere now what does that tell us without fans you've had maybe let's say the underdogs uh step forward i like it we all like an underdog story um 
so we had uh, the underdogs um, in France. You had Lille win the Ligue 1 uh, first time in 10 years. In Portugal, you had Sporting first time they win in 19 years. In Scotland, you had Rangers the first time they win in 10 years. In Spain, you had Atletico Madrid the first time they win in seven years. And in Italy, shout out to Salah. Um, Inter Milan champions for 11 years. We all like a, an underdog story. So um, kind of happy to see that. And also very happy to, um, to see Diego Simeone. Uh, Diego Simeone, the Atletico Madrid manager, coach. Here's a little background on this guy. The two seasons before Diego Simeone joined his team now, who just won um, the league, um, they finished ninth and seventh. And that league happens to have two of the biggest teams in the world in Barcelona and Real Madrid. They won uh, La Liga twice in his nine full seasons in charge. And they won the Europa League twice. They won the Copa del Rey and they never finished outside the top three. What a manager. Diego Simeone, come to London, man. Come to Arsenal, I'll drive you. Um, <laughs> Hashim says, uh, I-, I see the beard. Yes, Hashim, that's all you, my man. I really appreciate you looking after me. And shout out to your son, Aus, who turned four the other day, a master at Taekwondo as well. Hashim, you didn't see the video, man. Uh, you know, you said to me you could check out the YouTube and you probably didn't even see it. <laughs> you show it to your son. He's such a proud father as well, which is fantastic. I love seeing that. Um, so yeah, so, so shout out to Hashim. What's up, Mustafa, Hala, uh, Sophia, and Dala as well, all here. Um, before we take a break, the question of the day was: How do you reinvent yourself, and what do you do to reset? Do you switch it up? Do you do more? Do you do less? Have you looked at how much energy you're using on specific things? That was kind of like just to just to kind of play about with the brain a bit and see what you guys would come back with. So you still have a bit of time. This is the Halftime Show with Omar al on Pulse95. It sure is that time. It's the Halftime Show with Omar al I'm your host, Cameron Everything Sport, international and local. Thank you very much for spending the hour with us. Uh, lots to talk about. The Premier League, obviously, it's over. Now, what am I going to do for three months? Premier League is over. Um, La Liga is over. Sergio Ramos, by the way, has been left out of the Spain squad for the Euros. That is big news right now. Um, question coming in here. What's up, Big Hass? I see you, my bro. Uh, question here from Ali. Uh, who's going to win the Champions League and the Europa League? Okay, the, so my prediction from the beginning of the season was that Manchester City would win the league and the Champions League. Now, when Chelsea started playing against Porto, I kind of had this feeling that Chelsea would get to the final. Now that they've got to the final, I kind of have a feeling Chelsea are going to win. And two weeks ago, if you tuned into my show, just before the FA Cup final, I did say Leicester would beat Chelsea in the FA Cup final and Chelsea would beat Manchester City in the Champions League final. I'm going to stick to that, okay? Yes, the odds are against Manchester. Sorry, are against Chelsea, and Manchester City have been phenomenal this year. But I just have a feeling that Chelsea are going to win it, and especially that I was hoping Leicester would finish fourth. But now that Chelsea have finished fourth, I don't know if that will change psychology of the final because they've made it anyway. Because Thomas Tuchel, the manager, did say our aim was to finish top four. They got to the FA Cup final, they lost that. They got to the Champions League final, it doesn't matter now, they're, they're in in the Champions League next year. But I, I just had a feeling that Chelsea will win the final. So I hope that answers your question. Who's going to win the Europa League final? It's pretty obvious. I think Manchester United are going to win it. The reason why I say that is because I think Villarreal have shown every card they have. How they manage games, how they f- foul to break up play, how they tumble over to slow down play. I think they've done it against Arsenal very well and deserve to be in the final. I just think Manchester United are too quick, especially on the counter-attack. I can I can see United murdering uh, Villarreal. So I hope that answers your question. Um, okay, ha- Hashem's like, yalla. <laughs> uh, if the pressure point theory Amuri made before is correct, then Chelsea... Uh, yes, very good. See, now I know Ala actually choosing to the show. 
the point I made, and I put this actually up on my Instagram as well, that the reason why I thought Leicester would beat Chelsea in the FA Cup final and Chelsea would beat Manchester City was because the people who are who are thought to have going to win have more uh, pressure on them. So the favourites in the in in the cup finals normally they would be you know quite, there's a lot of pressure on them to win, and the underdogs they have nothing to lose so they can play fearless, and so that's why I kind of thought Chelsea would would lose against Leicester and it was it was incredible very very dramatic ending the VAR the the goal everything now with Chelsea being in the final and losing the FA Cup final could the pressure be back on Chelsea I don't know I just think momentum is key you know watching United play the last couple of games they've kind of crossed the line and just got there and before they got into the Europa League final, they were all guns blazing. Right now, they're just doing enough. Now, how will Oli motivate his players to win the Europa League final if they're already in the Champions League? You see, so this is what I mean. There's, it's going to be interesting to see how they manage that. Uh, what else do we have? And I'm in Iraq. Hala bil Iraq. Hala hala. Sharath, what's going on? Kurthum Debo from Florida is in the room, and also Florin from New York is in the room as well and Ali's saying 100% yeah so the question I have for you guys today and Debo you will like this one is how hard is it to reinvent yourself you know sometimes we come to uh, the realization that you need more you're just missing something whether it's your nutrition whether it's your recovery whether it's your training but then also sometimes we come to the realization that you need less and that you're doing too much and maybe you take something off your plate to be able to kind of appreciate your plate and, and I think that then came down to energy expenditure and how we use our energy. Sometimes you might be exhausted and you don't even train. Sometimes you might sleep more and feel more tired. You see what I mean? So you've got to have to see what works for you, but how are you using that? You know, um, that's what I was kind of asking the question today. And we had some good some good uh, comments back, especially Masoud, your comments were really solid regarding, you know, how you reset and how you recover and how you listen to your body. I think the mental side is, is so important. We've spoken about that so many times here on the show of how vital it is to be able to, you know, manage things, manage expectations. Don't overdo it. Don't be hard on yourself. Be mindful. Be grateful. We've spoken about all these things on the show and, and I think that's that's super key in, in the health and fitness segment of, of the show today. Um, yeah, with, with the current falling on domestic season across Europe. Yeah, it, it's... So what are we going to do now without Premier League and La Liga? That's a good question. Um, you know what? I think the Euros are coming up. So I think that's going to be good. Boxing as well. The drama with Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury. That's gone back and forward. Now it looks like Tyson Fury is going to have to fight Deontay Wilder for the third fight in uh, in Las Vegas in July and then that means Anthony Joshua has to um, who does he have to beat? Yusek I think he has to fight him so hopefully they both don't get hurt and they can fight each other maybe the end of the year because Saudi was supposed to host Joshua Fury in August, August 14th and now that's not going to happen you know um, a, a lot of yeah, a lot of things, uh, you know, put on hold now. I just hope, I just hope that um, that they don't ruin it. Uh, Fury did come out and say that he's going to finish Wilder off in one round. I think that's all gamesmanship. But yeah, all that boxing hype and everything we were kind of talking about, uh, you know, now is, is kind of put on hold for that. So... Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty disappointing. But yeah, uh, congratulations, Tashriq uh, Mohammed as well. His team, Usual Suspects, uh, won the halftime show Pulse 95 Radio League with 2,453 points, um, finishing above Pranav Prasanna, who was in second. So yeah, I'm going to try and get him on the show on Wednesday and ask him how he did it and whether he's going to be sharing his, uh, his tips for next season we have reached full time on the halftime show um, what's to talk about no boxing or football that's a good question you know what Megan I'm sure we'll find something to talk about in fact you, you kind of inspire me sometimes to come up with topics for health and fitness with your fitness background so we're going to come up with some stuff we're still boxing by the way and there's still MMA so don't worry we got you covered Megan no we got you covered we got a lot of stuff that we're going to be talking about here and obviously something that's been very successful thanks to your feedback is how we 
kind of dive in to the scope of fitness mentally as well as physically. So a lot of things that we will catch up on on the only place to be at three, the halftime show on Pulse 95. Salam, guys. Have a great day. If you liked this episode of the halftime show, drop a like and subscribe. 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories. Pulse.